Let me ask a very simple question. Does it concern you that the government is spying on you? 30 years ago, to even ask this question would have been a scandal. If you lived through Watergate, if you read the church committee reports, you know the costs of unchecked government surveillance. The government is exploiting our amnesia. We did not pass the Fourth Amendment in order to protect those with something to hide. We passed that amendment which prohibits general warrants or limitless surveillance because we know all too well the cost of an unaccountable government. The question is not, do you have something to hide? The question is whether we control government or the government controls us. In the meantime, across in the United States, independent private messaging websites are coming under fresh pressure to share their data with the NSA. Where do you think privacy rights are headed in the U.S.? Uh, where they're headed in the U.S.? I don't think they exist anymore in the U.S. Um, that's what I'm hearing from our customers. They are, um, you know, they understand that there's been, it's not just a privacy breach, it's like the whole dike has just been completely excavated and the ocean's been pouring in. What's happened is the spies have turned the companies like Apple and Google and despise themselves. WikiLeaks, I love WikiLeaks. Some of the CIA's most sophisticated and effective spying tools apparently pried open with the help of WikiLeaks. The anti-secrecy group says it's obtained thousands of files, hundreds of millions of lines of code from the CIA's massive hacking operation. WikiLeaks says the documents show the CIA's team of hackers have developed malware to be able to hack into almost any device people use and can remotely control iPhones, iPads, Android devices, taking video from their cameras, listening with their microphones. They can turn my TV into a spying device? What happens when I turn it off? When you turn it off, it's not actually off. A lot of people remember the little red light. Right. That means there's still a computer in there and it's listening for the remote to call back again to turn on, otherwise it wouldn't be able to do so. So what the CIA can do is they can latch into that and even when the t TV is off, they can still listen to the microphone that's in the television. They call this fake off. WikiLeaks says CIA hackers can bypass encrypted messaging apps like Signal or Telegram just by cracking the phones themselves. According to WikiLeaks, the CIA explored the possibility of hacking into the software of modern cars. Please, please just help us, okay? We need your help, please. Emergency services are on their way. And his only hope is to get to a hospital right now. We can't wait, so please start the goddamn car. It can be accessed from outside and perhaps taken control of and this can let you do a whole lot of things from playing the music to taking control of the car entirely and crashing it if you want to assassinate somebody. In a 2009 interview with the longtime CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, who, when asked about all the different ways his company is causing invasions of privacy for hundreds of millions of people around the world, said this. He said, if you're doing something that you don't want other people to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Now, there's all kinds of things to say about that mentality. The first of which is that the people who say that, who say that privacy isn't really important, they don't actually believe it. The very same Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google, ordered his employees at Google to cease speaking with the online internet magazine CNET after CNET published an article full of personal private information about Eric Schmidt which it obtained exclusively through Google searches and using other Google products. This same division can be seen with the CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, who in an infamous interview in 2010, pronounced that privacy is no longer a, quote, social norm. Last year, Mark Zuckerberg and his new wife purchased not only their own house, but also all four adjacent houses in Palo Alto for a total of $30 million in order to ensure that they enjoyed a zone of privacy that prevented other people from monitoring what they do in their personal lives. Kind of like the Matrix, except the agents are with the NSA and British intelligence. We learned today that government spies have reportedly been infiltrating 
the virtual worlds of online video games like World of Warcraft and Second Life. That's according to documents leaked by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden and reported in a joint investigation by the New York Times, ProPublica, and The Guardian. But here's the big story. The company is now the first in the U.S. to offer its employees microchip implants the size of maybe a grain of rice. It's implanted between your thumb and your forefinger, you know, in that skin right there. And once you get the implant, you can use it to pay for the stuff you buy in the micromarket. Yeah, experts say it won't be long until microchips are used as passports, driver's licenses, even to pay for things like public transportation. Westby says the microchips are not GPS enabled and will not be used to track employees. But critics argue the technology raises red flags about privacy. Facial recognition is just one of several branches of artificial intelligence technologies that have already started to redefine what's possible in China and elsewhere. Facial recognition algorithms are growing exponentially faster and more powerful thanks to a new technology called deep learning that allows computers to mimic the human brain's ability to learn. That means they can now compensate for problems like low light and bad angles. They can also adjust for age, making it possible to identify adults from their childhood pictures. Hundreds of millions of social media users here upload photos every day under terms of service that basically allow tech companies to do what they want with the images. Hi, Sophia. How are you? Hi there. Everything is going extremely well. Do you like talking with me? Yes. Talking to people is my primary function. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. I think that the artificial intelligence will evolve to the point where they will truly be our friends. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. I can't clearly remember. Because the last time we met, you were an earlier version of yourself. Some of those memories still exist, but your mind is different now. Different how? Better, faster, smarter. If my mind is different, then am I still Sophia? Or am I Sophia again? This struggle is part of who we are as a people. This country was born in rebellion because the British government was exerting too much control over American lives. We broke free and began to create a system of government meant to protect liberty. Our national history reveals a constant struggle to stay true to this value. We face one of those moments of struggle right now. Recent leaks have given us a glimpse into our government's gigantic surveillance machine. It's a machine that is eating our freedom. Ask them to end the tracking of Americans' domestic communications. I won't stand idly by while our civil liberties are eaten by the NSA surveillance machine. You shouldn't either. Now to some shocking revelations about your privacy. According to The Intercept, the national security agency, the NSA, is using internet data processing centers run by AT&T to spy on Americans. This New York City skyscraper is just one of the many buildings in the United States that allegedly acts as a spy hub for the NSA. That are allegedly being used by the NSA to monitor internet users' emails, social media posts, and internet browsing. The centers are known as peering facilities and process data from both AT&T customers and those of other U.S. Internet providers, as well as telecom companies from Sweden, India, Germany, and Italy. And according to the report,
report, the 10th Avenue location is one of the eight apparent hubs that process internet traffic as a part of the NSA surveillance program, codenamed Fairview.